In the last video, we've created this awesome overview of all the projects from, from our fake agency. And um, in this video, I want to show you how to build the pages for every project that we have. So right now, the projects are not really uh, displayed in a cool way because they only load the default template. And the default template is just a heading and a bit of text, so it doesn't really fit our projects. What I want to build in this video is um, a project page that has a two column layout with project information on the left, some text, a bit of additional information about the project, like the client, the link, um, maybe a category. And then on the right, I want to build a gallery with all the images for the project. Very traditional, but there's some cool stuff that I can show you with this kind of setup. The first thing we need to do is the same thing that we la did last time for the projects overview, we need to create a custom template for our project. And having a look at the, temp at the content, you can see that we have a project subfolder and then within the project subfolder we have subfolders for all the projects and those projects have a project.txt. So that file name um, is crucial because it will be used by Kirby to decide um, which template to load. So we need to create a project.php template in order for, for Kirby to find a custom template for this kind of page type. You see we have already a few fake images in here which we can use to build the gallery and we also have a bit of fake data for our project, category, client, link, etc. So let's get started. First we are going to head over to the template folder and in our template folder um, let's use the default template and make a copy of that and call it project.php and now we are ready to go. As a first step, I want to wrap this thing into an article because this is what it feels like to me, like an article. Um, and for the two column layout, I need a bit of HTML. So I need a project layout diff and within that I need a project info diff and I also need a project gallery diff. So the layout will create the columns and then within there I can have a bit more control over what happens within those columns. So I put the text in the info diff and we will put a bit more stuff in there in a second but let's get started with the gallery first. Those of you who watched the other videos before um, they are already familiar with the typical for each loops in lists that we used a couple times um, for the main menu and for the projects overview. And so far we have only used them for um, sub pages or for, for pages in general. And now this time we will use the, use the same technique for an image gallery. So let's make a list and put in some links. And now we can create a, a ga our gallery out of that by wrapping it in a for each loop. And within, ah, come on. So here is our for each loop. And so far what we did is something like this, right? So we, we used the sub pages of the page and then build a list of links. Um, but now we want to have the images and we can use the images method to do that. We could also use the files method to get all files, but that would also include spreadsheets and um, uh, whatever PowerPoint presentations or whatever you put into the folder. So um, by using the images method instead, we can make sure that only images will be included. And then we can call our variable image. And with that, we can do the same thing that we did before with pages so we can create um, an absolute link to that image by using the URL method and within the link tag or the link element we can simply echo the image to let Kirby um, build the image tag for us. If you need to apply a class name to that or if you want to have more control over the image tag, the alt uh, attribute or anything else, you could also write it like this. And then 
put your custom alternative text here or create a class name on your own. So this is also possible, but if you don't really need that type of control, it's totally fine to just echo the image object and that will create the image for you. So by doing this, we can check out how it looks like. Go to the first page. So yeah, so we have a, the text coming up front and then all the images listed below each other. They are pretty big, so they break our layout at this point. Doesn't really matter. We are going to fix that in a second. But from a technical perspective, we already solved what we wanted to do. So this is cool. One thing we can do to optimize it a bit in terms of the size of the images. So especially if you put like really big images into the, the project folders, we can resize it. I've shown this in the project video already, but maybe you haven't seen that so far. So we can do um, simple image manipulation right in the templates and Kirby will then resize or crop images for us and cache those resized versions. Um, so it will optimize the images for you in terms of the size. So in this case, the only optimization that we want to do or that I want to do is I want to make sure that the images are not wider than 1200 pixels. And we can do this with the height as well. So they are, they are not getting too big. Still pretty big, but I think that's fine for such a big portfolio page. And now they are cropped, um, not cropped, they are resized and they are a bit smaller and now we can work with them more easily in, in our CSS later. So that's cool. So as a, as a next step, what I want to do is I want to display uh, an information list um, with the client um, name, with the link, with the category below the text. And we can easily do that by adding a definition list below that. And in the definition list, we are going to use um, a DT for the client and then the, there comes the client name. And then there would be, what do we have? We have the category and we have a link. So that's cool. And now we can use our fields that we already created in the content. So let's open a content file quickly. And you can see the fields here, category, client, link, those fields are available, at least for the first project. And let's use those. In the same way that we used page title up here, we can do the same things for the other fields, for the client, for the category, and also for the link. Great. So let's see how this looks like. So now we have our list, still looks pretty, pretty boring, but we are getting there. The information is there and that's the most important part. Um, now, this project has all of that information and this is cool, but maybe if you have a look at a different project, you can see there is no link, for example, but we still have the link label up here. So this is not really nice. We, we, in this case, it would be better to remove the label entirely and not show it in the list. So how can we solve that? Each field in Kirby has additional methods that we can append afterwards in our chains that you have seen quite some times already. So for example, we could say we want to always want to uppercase the, the client name. This is something you can do, or you can say the client name should always be lowercase. So there are tons of methods that you can use with fields to manipulate them to yeah, to shorten them, to lowercase them, stuff like this. But you can also um, inspect them. And this is what we want to do for this particular case here, because we want to check out if the link is not empty. So we can create a little if clause and wrap this entire block in the if clause and say only if the link is not empty, this part of the HTML of this template is shown and otherwise it will be ignored. So let's have a look and we already fixed this problem. I would suggest that we do the same thing for the category and also for the client because it could easily happen that we don't have this information as well. So I prefer to do this in such cases for all the information that we have. Um, this also 
make sure that you never really run into problems when something is not there. And um, I, I really like this. We don't really need for the text because the text does not have um, a special wrapping element. If there was a special wrapping element, wait, yeah, let's put a wrapping element around it and then we can, we can get the idea. So once we have this, we would need to take care of this as well and only make sure that the wrapping element is included if the text is actually not empty. So you could also turn this around and say, if it is empty, we do something else. So in this case, it doesn't make sense, but you get the idea. So there's is empty and is not empty because you can use both of them. So now we have a great setup, which is pretty stable, even if you don't have the information ready. Cool. So now it's up to um, design this and I'm not going to spend too much time on it, but I want to spend a little time on it because there's a nice little trick that I can show you how to work with CSS for um, custom templates like this. Normally, what you could do is to put the CSS for the project page into your main CSS file. That would be totally fine and um, a good thing to do, especially if you want to minimize everything and just load one file. That's totally fine or totally um, best practice. But what I often feel like is um, another great way of handling this is to have a separate file for the template design. Um, what I mean by this is you have the, the main CSS file for all the, the site stuff that is shared across all the pages. And then for like more complex layouts like this, you would have an additional file that only serves the CSS for that particular layout. And we can do this quite easily in Kirby with a little trick um, by creating in our assets CSS folder, we are creating another subfolder and we call it templates. And in that templates folder, we can create a new file and we call that project CSS. So that structure, assets CSS templates, is something that Kirby um, expects from you from the start. Um, you can modify this in the config if you don't like it. But other than that, if you want to use this feature, you would also need to use this kind of um, folder layout for your um, CSS files. So what we can do if we have such a CSS file, um, let's do something really weird and load a back red background in here just to show you that it works. We can go back into our header snippet. This is where we loaded the main CSS file for our site. And we can create a new line and instead of giving it an absolute path or a relative path to a CSS file, we can add the magic auto word. Um, and that will mean that Kirby automatically looks if there is a CSS file for the current template. So it will check in the templates, uh, assets CSS templates folder, is there a project.css? because we are currently on the project template. And if it's there, um, it will create a link for it. And if it's not there, it will ignore it. So now we can have a look at it. And as you can see, now the site is red or the page is red because that, that additional CSS file is loaded. And if you go to the other pages, you can see they are still fine. So the red doesn't appear there. And this is really cool in my opinion, because now we can go into our project CSS and focus only on our project template and add some CSS for our project here. So let's do that. So we have our project layout div and we are going to use the grid, the mighty mighty grid to create a little nice column layout. So I remove the, back red, uh, the red background again, because that's just stupid. Um, so we need to design or to style our gallery a bit, make sure that the images don't overflow what we have. Um, we need to remove the weird list bullets that don't fit here. This style none. What? Ah, it's in the URL. So this starts to look a lot better. What do we have as well? So we have our info block 
can increase the line height a bit in our info block to make the text a bit more readable. We have our project text and we can put a bit of margin below it so it does have a bit of separation between the info block and then the info block we can make that dt is bold and that looks a bit nicer as well and now we need to style the gallery and then we are pretty much done for for the for today so for the gallery what i want to do is also use the mighty grid uh, doesn't do anything and i want to use a four column grid template columns so four columns they should all have the same width so that starts to look cool i want the items to be centered so they align nicely we need a bit of grid gap yeah that's cool and now i want to feature the first one let's just pretend the first one is the most important one and let's do that by spanning the grid columns in the first um, child in the first item um, grid column start would be one and the it ends on the last column which is always minus one so we have a nice gallery with just a few lines of css the first one is featured the the, uh, the other ones are below it um, you can click on the images you get to the big ones um, this could easily be enhanced with a nice light box a javascript light box or css light box or whatever you have in your pockets when you build your favorite sites um, i'm not going to go into such details i think it would be a better way to keep this open for for whatever you like the, the most favorite libraries that you use so yeah, but now we have a really nice looking project page um, that we can extend. We can have more fields. We could uh, now build a proper link out of this. We could add some navigation between the projects. Um, yeah, all of this could follow in, in more videos. Thank you very much for watching. See you in the next one. Bye bye.